Can you explain the concept for everyone of EST? EST. So EST, I call myself the EST of WWE. That means that I am the strongest, the fastest, the roughest, the toughest, the quickest, the greatest, the best, the B-E-S-T. Anything good that ends in EST, that's what I am. And I'm all about striving to be the best version of myself. So that's where EST comes from. All right, we're going to jump right in, Bianca. You've had a uh, whirlwind 2021, 2022. Uh, WrestleMania, uh, SmackDown champion, Royal Rumble, you're getting ready to head back to WrestleMania. I, I mean, how have you handled all of this? <sighs> um, You know, being in WWE, everything comes so fast, and you never know when it comes. So I'll, my motto is, Stay ready so you don't have to get ready because you never know when your opportunity comes. My opportunity came out of nowhere last year, winning uh, the, the the Royal Rumble and then going to main event WrestleMania with Sasha Banks, being the first two black females to ever main event, main, main event WrestleMania, walking out of SmackDown as champion. Um, like you said, um, winning Survivor Series and and went in Elimination Chamber, and now I'm going into, into WrestleMania 38 with another opportunity to become champion again, again by facing Becky Lynch. I'm going for the Raw Women's Championship. So it's been a whirlwind, but I'm, I'm taking it as it comes, and I'm just capitalizing off of all these opportunities. <laughs> and I love the way that you're soaking it in as well. I was reliving the clips of you at WrestleMania, uh, all-female African-American main event at WrestleMania, and we saw the emotions before the match got started. Can you just take us through your emotions that day? Yeah, that day, you know, just being one of the women, you know, alongside with Sasha Banks, many men in WrestleMania, unprecedented moment. Uh, first time the two black females are many men in WrestleMania. Um, it, you know, you talk about getting to the main event of WrestleMania. You talk about just getting to WrestleMania and all of a sudden we were there and Anytime that anyone gives you advice about WrestleMania, number one thing they always say is just slow down and soak it in because you, you just soak it in. And so I'm so glad that we took that moment in the beginning and without us even having to open our mouths or touch each other, just standing there in that moment, it was so powerful. And you see it in my face. If you go and you watch that, that the first 30 seconds of the match of us just standing there. I almost lost it. I was in tears before the match even started because the moment was so powerful. And to know that all the women that came before us, they, they laid that foundation for us to be able to walk through those doors and for Sasha Banks and I to be in that moment and make history. And that moment was bigger than me. It was bigger than Sasha. It was bigger than women winning the SmackDown Women's Championship. It was just a huge moment and it's gonna inspire people now and in the future and we even won an SV off off of that match that moment so it was everything <laughs> hey, that's that's mind-blowing winning an SV off of that and you were just you, you're just doing a great job of highlighting it right there what does representation mean to you when you think about your journey and what you now represent what does representation mean to you yeah, you know, I always say, I always use the quote, uh, representation is not a request, it's a requirement. It, it really is, you know, I think about the role models that were representation for me growing up and how they changed the whole trajectory of my life. Like I am where I am now because of them, because they showed me what was possible for me. And I always force too that if you want to do something and you don't see someone doing that, you become that person so that other people can walk through the door that, that you open, that you create. You know, representation, it really just shows people, you know, you're able to look at someone that looks like you and, and, and see them doing doing these things. And it really gives you this, this example, this of idea of where you fit in society, where you fit in the world. Uh, it shows you um, the the limits or the or the, the glass lens that you can break. Uh, it really is it's an example of, um, of the things that you can do and how you're presented and how, where, where you place, where you're placed in this society. So I think representation is important in all areas, right? Because there's, there should be diversity and equity everywhere. So for me, representation, I just want to represent for women, for women of color, for and even people that don't look like me, I just want to represent if you've been in a situation that I've been in, you know, I, I, I dealt with depression and anxiety. That's representation there showing that you don't always 
start from the top. You start, sometimes you start from the bottom, the middle, no matter, no matter where you start from, you can succeed and do whatever it is that you want to do. And you're crushing it and inspiring so many different people. Well, let's talk about music for a moment. I love music, talk music on the show. Um, and it's a part of so many people's lives, no matter what you do. But I love talking about it with athletes and guys and gals and before a big event, game match, whatever it may be, listening to something to pump them up or smooth things out. So I'm curious, what's on your playlist? Ooh, my playlist is so, um, I guess, diverse, but I'm a huge J. Cole fan. I mean, I mean, my finish is called the oh. KOD, which that's one of my favorite songs from J. Cole or No oh. Role Models or Love Yours. Um, I'm a huge Beyonce fan. School in Life, they just get like, that's like one of the best songs to work out to. Um, I'm a huge uh, Meg Thee Stallion fan. Um, I also listen to gospel music like Kurt Franklin. They're, like that just gets me so pumped up for just um, workouts. Like I, I listen to gospel music a lot, Kurt Franklin a lot, a lot when I'm working out because I'd be going through it and I'd be like, I need to need something to push me through. Um, or, you know, just, keep me in a good mood. So those are really like my, my main go-tos for working out and before I go out there and I compete. <laughs> you got something for every mood. <laughs> every yes. mood. And I've been I love the big... whack too. So, I mean, oh. I'm just like everywhere. <laughs> I've been on a big uh, J. Cole uh, mode for about a month now. So I've been rocking a lot, listening to a lot of J. Cole. And it's funny, the, the connection and the crossover between hip hop and WWE. We've seen Snoop make <laughs> numerous WWE appearances. You performed at Rolling Loud. Like, what do you, what do you think about this connection between hip hop and, and, and WWE? You know, music is such a huge part of WWE. For my, for, even for my entrance music and our theme music, that's the first thing that people, they hear our, our music before they even see us. But, you know, it's always been, like you said, that the integration of music, especially the hip hop, uh, the world and industry with WWE, like you said, Snoop Dogg, P. Diddy, uh, we just had Migos at day one in Atlanta that actually, they were out there with, with my husband, who's one half of the Street Profits, when they were facing RK Bro. Um, I got to meet Meg Thee Stallion last year. We went to Rolling Loud. So it's always, um, it's always been a huge part of WWE, but for me specifically, uh, rap and hip hop, that's been a part of my life since I was born. Like I was born into, you know, it's part of my culture and, and that's what we listen to in my community. So um, to have both of my worlds now colliding together even more and integrating more, it means everything to me. And it's really cool, you know, going to Rolling Loud, my husband and I, we were actually looking to try to go to Rolling Loud. And then we found out, wait, you're not just going, you're performing on the same stage as some of your favorite artists. So it was, it was, it was real dope. And um, I just hope we can keep doing more collaborations uh, because anytime that both of my worlds collide, I feel right at home, no matter what, what I'm doing. So it's cool. <laughs> now you've shown like amazing, impressive, yes indeed, uh, feats of athleticism in the ring. And we know the fans love it, but I'm just curious, what's the reaction in the locker room? Did some of <laughs> pull off? Um, you know, what's amazing about, especially the women's locker room at WWE, I love our locker room. It's full of so much talent. And it's like, it's just the true definition of women empowerment. So whenever I'm out there pressing girls over my head, one arm pressing girls or, the, or picking up Otis, who's a, the 300, 400 pound guy on the roster, uh, they're always cheering when I come backstage and, and they're, they're very encouraging. I even bring up, um, we were in Saudi Arabia for Crown Jewel. And I usually do a two arm press to girls. And it was a moment where I was like, okay, maybe I can do this one arm press, but I'm really nervous about doing it. And Sasha Banks was the, one, was the main person that was like, uh-uh, no. If you don't do the one arm press, then just don't do it. Like, <laughs> no, go do it. Like they are, they're so encouraging. Um, but also I feel like I dig myself in a hole too, because now I feel like I do so many like feats of strength that they think I can do everything. <laughs> You know, sometimes and they, it's like certain ideas. I'm like, okay, y'all think I'm somebody I'm not. I can't do that now. But it's, it's cool how they have like so much faith in me. 
of great Bendy. Now, the, the long braid, we see the long braid there. It's been a staple of your character since you entered WWE. You've used it as a, a weapon. We've seen <laughs> numerous times it has been used against you. Um, what, what made you, how did the idea come about that the braid, your hair, using your hair as a part of your persona? Yeah, so at first it was just something that was a signature look. It made me stand out. My husband was one of the main people who is, he's Montez Ford. He's one half of the tag team, Street Profits. Uh, he was one of the main, one of the main people that, that was like, no, you need to wear the braid because it makes you stand out. And that's what makes you unique. And he was like, if anybody comes to a show for the first time, even if they don't remember your name, they're going to remember the girl with the braid. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the best way to stand out and be unique. So it just started out as a signature look. But then the first thing that girls would want to do in the ring was pull my hair and touch my hair. And I'm just like, don't touch my hair. Like, that's my rule. So I was, like, I was like, I have to do something to get them to stop going to my hair. And so in a match, I threw it at a girl. It hit her. It made this huge noise. The crowd went crazy and it took her down. I was able to capitalize off of it. So that was when I first learned that I could use it. So um, I do use my hair as a weapon, but only when it's absolutely necessary, when they don't follow my rule, which is do not touch my hair. Solange Knowles right there. Solange, that's <laughs> um, let's take it. Let's go back in time for a minute, Bianca. Um, obviously, very athletic. Uh, give us the background on where things started from you and 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 as an athlete, and and how that led you to WWE. Yeah, my journey to WWE is a little unique. Um, I did not watch wrestling a whole lot growing up. I wasn't a, a kid that was striving to be a WWE superstar one day. I was the little girl who was climbing trees in her front yard. So my, my mom and my daddy put me in gymnastics and track and every sport in the book because I was just very active. I started running track at the age of five, gymnastics, 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 bleh, gymnastics at the age of five, um, and then played basketball, cheerleading. But my main sport was track and field. I went and ran collegiate, um, collegiate track and field at University of South Carolina, Texas A&M, and then University of Tennessee. So I went all over the place, but I was an all SEC hurdler. Um, and then after track, I really, I've been, had been an athlete my whole life. So I missed that competitive atmosphere, you know? And so I found CrossFit and that's when I really started like lifting weights and really embracing my muscles and really falling in love with my body. And during CrossFit, I would wear um, like these big bows and tutus and, and sequins outfits. And I made my own outfits. So I really stood out and I would grab the microphone and talk to the audience. So Mark Henry, who's a hall of famer, he saw a video of me and he's like, Hey, have you ever thought of being a WWE superstar? Because you have the athleticism, you have the look, you like talking in front of people and you're basically wearing wrestling gear and you don't even know it. And so uh, <laughs> he said he can get me a tryout, but he couldn't get them to hire me. It took me two tryouts and I started in WWE in 2016. And it's just crazy because I never imagined myself being a WWE superstar, but now I can't imagine myself doing anything other than what I'm doing now. And I feel like I'm I was born to do this. I'm walking in my purpose. So it's an amazing feeling when you feel like you're, you finally found your purpose and you're doing it. And that's what I'm doing right now. That's unbelievable. Did you think it was a joke when, when Mark Henry brings up, you're like, hey, you should be in WWE. <laughs> well, for one, I thought it was a fake account when <laughs> Mark Henry started commenting on my photos and was popping up in my DMs. And I was like, that's fake. And my nephew was the one that was, that was like, yo, Mark Henry just commented on your page. I'm like, it's fake. And then I went and researched and I was like, oh wait, no, this is Mark Henry. What, what are you saying? And in, in my DMs, he was just saying, you know, um, he saw a video of me, he, he had faith in me and, and he wanted to give me a tryout. So once I realized it was the real Mark Henry, I was like, okay, this is the real deal. <laughs> I love it. All right, on a, on a, on a, on a serious note, and I, I think this is important. You, you've been very open um, about, you know, mental health and about eating disorder um, previous to your time in WWE and revealing that part of yourself. Why did you feel like that was important? You know, I was doing my WWE Chronicle and I was just talking about my life and, and my childhood and, and things I've been through. And I just felt like it wasn't telling my truth if I left that part out because that's a part of 
who I am, especially right now. And I will say, and in the moment when I was going through it, yes, I felt very embarrassed and vulnerable and um, would not have shared it then. But I felt like, okay, I'm not going through this anymore. I've gone through it. So I need to share this. And I know what it felt like in that moment to feel alone and feel misunderstood. And um, and so I just, I felt like I, I, I owed it to uh, my younger self and I owed it to the people that were going through it as well to share that and to help anybody else that was going through it and to kind of just um, normalize talking about it and it not being this um, high stress situation of feeling like you have to open up and just I just want to be comfortable with it and it's, look I'm talking about it and it's fine to talk about it because you have to talk about it first and be vulnerable before you can get help and so that was really just uh, the reason why I just opened up about it and um felt more comfortable doing it since I had, you know, it's a, it, I'm still going through this. It's a journey. You know, I just, I just know my triggers and I'm able to manage it better. And, um, but it was really just about, I feel like I owed it to my younger self and to my parents and, and the people that helped me through it and to people, and to the people that are going through it now as well. Inspiring a lot of people. How, real quick, how, how therapeutic was that for you? It was so therapeutic. Um, just being able to just open up and talk about it and be vulnerable all over again. I feel like in that moment, you know, going through it, I learned so much about myself, but in the moment of opening up and talking about it, I learned even more about myself and I evolved and grew even more by just opening up. Um, and it just felt like this huge weight off of my shoulders of just being open and honest and vulnerable. And I'm always in the ring talking about being unapologetically me and presenting myself as a, as, my, as a whole. So I felt like I can't preach this in the ring and not do it outside the ring. So this is me, this is, I'm being unapologetically me. This is a part of my story and I'm gonna be comfortable with that. Let's switch gears for a moment. Now you mentioned the name a few times, Montez Ford, your husband. <laughs> Tell me the first day you two met. <laughs> <laughs> We actually, my husband and I, we actually met um, in NXT, in WWE. Um, I remember I saw him for a brief moment when I first got there. And then I didn't see him again for another like three months. And it was actually a dinner that one of the girls that we worked with, she got a dinner together because so everybody can come and like meet each other. And he walked through the door and my friend sitting next to me, I was like, that is a beautiful man. He <laughs> away from me and um but no I went after him you know I was like I went after him and it was just like lust at first sight and ever since that night we we've been inseparable and all of a sudden we were moving in together and we moved in together and we were like did we talk about this nope okay now we're engaged and a year later we were married <laughs> how wild is how cool is it working together it's cool. You know, I say, I always say I'm blessed to do what I love with the person I love. You know, we live together, we work together, we travel together. People that we work with say that we're obsessed with each other, which I mean, it is what it is. Like that's my homie, my lover, my best friend. Um, it's really cool. You know, we get to share these great moments together, uh, celebrate these great moments together. And then when we're going through things, we get to share those moments with each other and we understand it. So, um, I think it's very beneficial. I couldn't imagine my life any other way. I mean, I'm just blessed. WWE brought me a whole career in, in a husband. So, <laughs> so much happiness. So much, so much. Now, um, you mentioned this, this journey of yours, which is, I mean, I, I'm sure it's been wild to keep up with your friends, wild to keep up with them doing this and how amazing it is. How supportive have your parents been in this journey we saw the social media reactions to the royal rumble win <laughs> listen my parents i think i have the goat the goat family um <laughs> my parents have not missed a track meet basketball game band recital ballet recital for the two weeks that i did it um soccer meet uh, game they haven't missed anything and they have kept that same energy even when I became an adult. Uh, they are there every step of the way. They're watching everything that I do. They become my biggest fans. 
my mama just sent me a photo of her. She went to a, um, a, a cowboy store and bought her a cowboy hat. My daddy bought him some cowboy boots because we're going to be in Dallas, Texas for WrestleMania. So, um, I mean, they're going all in. My daddy's falling over the back of the couch when I'm doing my entrance. Nobody ever believed me when I used to tell them that my daddy would get so excited just off of like my entrance that he would just fall over the back of the couch and I finally got it on camera. But um, WrestleMania, my daddy almost jumped over the barricade. Security had to grab him. Um, my, mom, my mama was praise dancing when I won <laughs> WrestleMania. Uh, my brother almost threw my nephew over the barricade. It was just, they're just, they are the most amazing, most loving, supportive people ever. And I would not be able to do what I do without them. Um, they're, they're just, they're everything. And they have to be there for every one of my big moments. They have to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bianca, you have other talents too. Um, you make your own ring gear. Yeah. And so your husband as well. Um, tell us about that. And could we see, could we see a Bianca Belair clothing line at some point? <laughs> could we see? That's the goal is to eventually do a clothing line. Um, right now I'm very busy, but yes, I, I make and I sew all of my own gear. Um, it's just, I, I've been sewing since I was a, a little a little girl by hand, but now honestly, I learned everything from YouTube and just experimenting. I got my first sewing machine maybe five years ago, but um, no, I, I'm making some of my own gear. I love to do it. Um, you know, it's just a feeling of you get in the ring and I'm, I look down, I'm like, I made this. And I'm looking at, at the girl across from me, like, what did you do? You didn't make your gear, I made my gear. But it's, 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 um, it's even like these dope moments of like, when I go to the store and I see my action figure, and I'm like, that's me. And the gear that she has on, I made that gear. When I look at the video game, it's me and I'm in the gear that I made. And it's even, I can't like, at the end of my career, I'm gonna have a this huge collection because I make all of my gear with the purpose of only wearing it once for my big moments. So every time I look at a specific gear, I know exactly where it came from. And so I, I collect all these gears. So I have my Royal Rumble gear, my Survivor Series gear, WrestleMania gear, and I've only worn it for those specific moments. That's so dope. Now, the one that, that stood out also, the Black History gear that you rocked. Um, what made you decide to do that one? And, and what was the reaction to it? Yeah, so, um, the year before I did a Black History Month gear where I just did a, a, a bunch of like different icons and people that were like role models to me. And the next year of a Black History Month, I was in Takeover Portland versus uh, facing Rhea Ripley. And we, you know, we always talk about like Black history and, and we, and I feel like we always, a lot of times go to the history books to find Black history. So my thing was, you know, don't just learn history, make history. Let's dive into Becky Lynch then, um, and this this battle WrestleMania two night event April second April third Arlington Texas gonna be streaming. Peacock, how'd you come to find out about this this uh, this showdown with Becky Lynch, and what can we expect? Ooh, what can we expect? Um, you can expect me walking out of WrestleMania as Raw Women's Champion and redeeming myself against Becky Lynch. That's what you can expect. I'm putting that in the air. But no, yeah, I got to redeem myself. You know, um, Becky Lynch, I was champion. I, I was I was champion off of main event of WrestleMania and I had all this momentum. And then Becky Lynch came into SummerSlam and beat me in 26 seconds. Mm -hmm. um, and she became the champion. And she's been holding on to that championship ever since. Um, and every single time that I've tried to go up against her, something got in my way. Uh, the match got messed up by Sasha or um, the triple threat where uh, I, I didn't I didn't get pinned and, and I, I hit my finish on her, but then Sasha came and messed it up or Becky's cheating, whatever it is. I don't, I'm not making excuses. I'm just focusing on WrestleMania and I'm coming after her. This story, this, this feud has been going on since August. So I'm looking to bring it full circle and just show people that, look, you can be on top and you can you can fall just as quickly as you rose, but at the end of the day, you go through things, don't give up and keep pushing through. And it's okay, sometimes bad things happen, but you're gonna, we're gonna push through and we're gonna bring this story around full circle and and get back on top that rest uh, of the day. Is it gonna be a quick work? Are you expecting a long night? What can we, you know? You know, I don't know. I, I, I 
this is my thing. Last uh-huh. year, I walked into WrestleMania as a rookie. This year, I'm walking in as a former WrestleMania winner. And Becky Lynch and I are the only two females that have ever won the main event of WrestleMania, going head to head again at WrestleMania. So I don't know if it's going to be quick. I don't know if it's going to be long, but I know we're going to give a WrestleMania performance, a WrestleMania match, one to remember. And um, yeah, I'm just looking to go back to back and just walk out as Raw Miss Champion. And whether that takes 25 <laughs> seconds or 25 minutes, my goal is walking out as Raw Miss Champion. <laughs> More history being made for sure. Uh, before we wrap, you know, you mentioned the video game already, WWE 2K22. How surreal is that? I mean, you mentioned not only, you know, you can choose your character, just like the action figure, choose your character, but that's an outfit that you designed. But just being in a video game, period, and people can choose you and, and compete with you, just how surreal is that? Uh, being in a video game, it's surreal. Uh, I will never get used to it. Um, my husband and I, we were just uh, playing the video game. He had me facing Becky Lynch <laughs> in the video <laughs> game. And it's it's... It's one thing to just see you in the video game. It's like, that's, that's my face. That's my hair. But then to see the video game where it shows it's your mannerisms and it's, you know, it's, you're taunting people and I'm, I'm hair whipping people. It's surreal. Um, and sometimes after I see myself in the video game, I'm just like, what do I do now? Do I just, I'm in a video game. Do I, do I still eat like lunch or do I eat like a, a different type of lunch I don't know I'm, I'm feeling and acting kind of different right now <laughs> but it's good and, and, and for me the, the coolest thing about that too is um my nieces and my nephews and my and my stepkids they they play me in the video game and then I I get hit up by my friends from like college and high school that have kids now and their kids are playing me in the video game it's crazy <laughs> it's wild you know because it's like um with music, you were talking about, you know, Meg Thee Stallion and, and J. Cole earlier and people reciting their lyrics. I mean, it's, that's their art form, but your art form is being imitated in games by by, by kids who, who appreciate you, grown folks who appreciate you. I mean, that's, that's influence, you know, right there. And it's wild, right? It's so wild. And so, so to be able to see it and get videos of like, kids and, and adults and it doesn't matter who 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 it is getting videos of them playing the video game and playing me um it's it's cool it's hard to put into words it's a feeling um and something that can be described but i'm blessed and i'm honored and i'm just happy <laughs> <laughs> finally um what does the future hold for bianca Bella? the future for bianca Bella is bright it's the bright s do you see what i did there the bright s <laughs> That. No, I'm, uh, the future is starting with April 2nd at WrestleMania at AT&T Stadium, walking out as Raw Women's Champion. And then uh, my long-term goal, uh, you know, I want to defeat all four horsewomen, who is Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, Bailey, and Sasha. After WrestleMania, if, when I walk out as Raw Women's Champion, I, would, I will have, um, would have defended and pinned three out of the four. So... I've pinned Bailey. I've pinned Sasha in WrestleMania 38. My goal is to pin Becky Lynch. And then after that is to go after Charlotte Flair. I want to be the, you know, I'm here as the one of the faces of the new generation of women's wrestling coming through. The four women, the four horsewomen have done amazing things and paved the way. Um, and I'm just here to, to, to come through and say, hey, just scoot aside, make some room for me because I'm here on the scene now. Too. So that's my long term goal. And um. You know, we'll, we'll throw after, you know, right now I'm focused on wrestling. After that, we'll throw maybe in some some acting in there, some movies. You know, I see what Sasha Banks over there doing. So um, we're acting and I would love to get into that. Maybe write some children's books and some books in there. And and hey, who, now, you know, we talked about the video game. I would love to be on the cover of a video game. Oh, okay. The only woman by myself. That's the <laughs> <goal> right there. <laughs> I, I love it. Well, you know what you're on, you on, not just at WrestleMania, but with everything that you have going on. And uh, just, just keep making history. We appreciate you and love this conversation. Thank you so much, Bianca. Thank you. This was fun. <laughs>